Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Now the best gaming CPU in 2024, it's the Ryzen 7800X 3D, especially when paired with an upper mid-range or high-end graphics card. Today, we'll cover everything that you need to know for the best Ryzen 7800X 3D gaming PC build in 2024, including the best GPU for Ryzen 7800X 3D, the best RAM for Ryzen 7800X 3D, best motherboard for Ryzen 7800X 3D, and more. And we'll give you specific build templates for both a budget and premium Ryzen 7800X3D gaming PC build. Remember, if you get value out of this video, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Let's start off with why the Ryzen 7800X3D is the best gaming CPU in 2024. And in particular, why you want this CPU for gaming versus the higher core count Ryzen 7900X3D or the Ryzen 7950X3D. The increased vertical cache or vCache on the CPU, that's what drives the gaming performance. And the Ryzen 7800X3D has all of that in a single CCD meaning that all eight cores and all the cache are in one place. The Ryzen 7900X3D and 7950X3D, they divide up the cores between two CCDs, and only one of them has the vCache. When switching between gaming and other applications, the Ryzen 7900X3D and 7950X3D, they're supposed to turn off the CCD that doesn't have the vCache, but it can still be a little buggy sometimes and turn off the wrong one. The Ryzen 7800X3D does not have this issue with only a single CCD and has equal or better gaming performance. So that's why we strongly recommend the Ryzen 7800X3D for high-end gamers and the 7800X3D it still has eight cores, which is very powerful for multi-threaded applications like video editing or graphic design work. Not to mention it tends to cost quite a bit less. So what's the best GPU for the Ryzen 7800X 3D? Now remember that we get the most FPS in a gaming PC build when we get the fastest GPU we can afford and then just get a CPU that's not going to bottleneck it. Now you will often get more FPS with the same budget by going with a lower end CPU if that cost difference will allow you to move up to the next tier of GPU. But as we get to the high end of GPU performance, the CPU really does start to matter. That's why I recommend a minimum GPU of at least a Radeon 7900 GRE or an RTX 4070 Super. Otherwise, you should consider the Ryzen 7600 CPU instead, which right now would save you about $150 that you could put towards upgrading your GPU. From there, the bigger the GPU that we pair with a Ryzen 7800X3D, the better. And it increases in value as we get to GPUs like the Radeon RX 7900 XTX, RTX 4080 Super, and RTX 4090. So what's the best RAM for the Ryzen 7800X 3D? Well, let's start off with the speed. In our previous testing, as well as testing from other outlets, we found that the Ryzen 7800X 3D, it's just not very memory speed dependent because of its huge amount of vCache. Based on current DDR5 availability and pricing in the US and other markets, we continue to recommend DDR5 6000 CL30 as the best price to performance kits. And at the time of filming, those are available starting at $90 in the US for non-RGB kits and going up to $110 to $120 for RGB kits. In particular, I really like the Team Group T-Force Delta RGB kits, which can be found for right around $100. Also, these G-Skill Triton Z5 Neo kits are really popular. In terms of faster kits, I have seen testing for kits up to 8,000, and there's just virtually no difference in FPS performance. Yes, in a couple of titles, the 8,000 speed RAM is slightly better, but in others, the 6,000 speed RAM is better, and it comes out to be a wash. So getting anything faster is really just wasted money. If you can find slower RAM and that saves you a little bit of money, or if that's all that's available in your region, then don't worry about it and just grab anything at 5200 CL40 or faster. Though note that for some reason, slower kits have completely disappeared off the market in the US and some other regions, so you want to pick up a 6000 CL30 kit. How much RAM do you need? Well, normally I'd say that a 2x8 gigabyte kit, so 16 gigabytes total, is all you need for gaming. But the reality is, I can't find a single kit smaller than 2x16 gigabytes, so 32 gigabytes total, on the DIY PC market at the recommended speeds. So that's what you're going to get, which is more than enough for gaming. Finally, we have both XMP and AMD Expo kits available, and I'm happy to say that every motherboard that I've seen for AM5 can use either one, and they're functionally the same, so don't worry about which one you get. Just remember to go into the BIOS and turn on the XMP or Expo profile to make sure that your RAM is running at the full rated speed. We go through how to do this in our how to set up a PC guide video, and if you need more help with RAM, check out our best RAM for gaming video 
for a deeper dive. So what's the best motherboard for the Ryzen 7800X3D in 2024? We have an entire video on the best motherboard for Ryzen 2024, so I'm gonna leave that link down in the video description in our how to build a PC playlist for more information. In short, you'll likely want a B650 or a B650E motherboard, and there's no useful difference between them and the X670 boards. So focus on the motherboard features that you want, like USB ports, motherboard audio, the number of M.2 SSD sockets, and anything else that's useful for you. I'll state again that PCIe Gen 5 SSDs are a worthless feature that are just a money sink for gamers, and even an RTX 4090 can run using PCIe Gen 3 GPU slots. So do not spend extra to get PCIe Gen 5 SSDs or even GPU support. I'd also avoid the A620 chipset motherboards as they do not support Precision Boost Overdrive, which is AMD's auto overclocking feature, and we definitely wanna turn that on for the Ryzen 7800X3D. Note that you may need to use the BIOS flashback feature, which so far all the AM5 motherboards have in order to update the BIOS to get the board to boot with your Ryzen 7800X3D, and that's something that we go over in our How to Build a PC guide. Here's my top picks. Starting the more value-focused mid-range motherboards around $130 to $150, I really like the MSI Pro B650M-A Wi-Fi as it has a decent amount of rear USB ports, two M.2 slots, and a really solid VRM, though it only rocks a more entry-level audio solution. Remember, check out those links in the video description for current pricing and availability in your region. Alternatively, I also like the ASRock B650M Pro RS and Pro RS Wi-Fi, which are very similar, except that they trade out some of the higher speed USB connections for an additional M.2 slot, and they come in a nice looking silver white look. For those of you wanting a full size ATX board, the MSI B650 Gaming Wi-Fi is basically the full size version of the MSI Pro Micro ATX board for $169, and the Gigabyte Eagle AX has very similar features, including the extra M.2 socket as the ASRock Micro ATX motherboard for $159. Now note in our recent 7800X3D build, we use the MSI Project Zero motherboard with cable connections on the back of the motherboard for a very clean look inside a compatible case. So if you're interested in that, check out the full build video linked in the description. If you want more premium motherboards, and after all, we're talking about currently the fastest gaming CPU, so spending a little extra on our motherboard, it's not a bad idea. There are plenty of good options out there. In particular, I like the MSI B650 Tomahawk, right around $200 US, which is a great range of USB, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, three M.2 slots, upgraded ALC 4080 audio, and comes in a nice matte black finish. If you're looking for a white version of this board, that's basically the MSI B650 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. Other picks include the ASUS Tough Gaming B650 Plus. Avoid the Dash E version as it's just a budget motherboard with different styling for almost the same amount of money. The Tough B650 Plus has improved ALC 1200 audio, three M.2 slots, a decent rear I.O., and nice black styling. If you don't care about the motherboard audio and you just want tons of USB connections, the Aorus B650 Elite AXV2 is a great board. And of course, if you want tons of features and you're prepared to pay the price for them, the ASUS ROG Strix B650-A is a nice white alternative that sometimes goes on sale for almost $200, and the B650E-F Strix board is usually $250 or more sometimes, but offers an impressive array of rear I.O., fantastic VRMs, premium audio solution with ALC 1220 audio codec, and it looks amazing. If you're looking for the best mini ITX motherboard for Ryzen 78 X3D, I think the Aorus B650i wins hands down with three M.2 slots, upgraded features, and reasonable pricing. For even more picks, like all white motherboards or other ITX options, check out our Best Ryzen Motherboard 2024 video, and everything I mentioned here is linked down in the video description. Now let's talk about the best CPU cooler for the Ryzen 7800X3D. Now, while these CPUs run a bit hotter than the Ryzen 7700X 8-core CPU, the good news is that they're relatively easy to cool. But you should note that these CPUs are designed to really push performance while under load, including eating up pretty much any available cooling to increase CPU clock speeds, which means more heat. Now, that being said, with a good CPU cooler, these CPUs will run closer to 80 degrees Celsius under full load, which is quite a bit lower than their 89 degrees Celsius thermal throttle limit. I recommend any mid-range air cooler, like the Thermorite Pure Assassin 120 SE or the Phantom Spirit 120 SE, the Deep Cool AK500 or similar style cooler that either has a large single tower or dual tower cooler. While it might be possible to run the 7800X3D on a budget single tower air cooler, mid-range air coolers are just so cheap these days, there's just no reason to put up with the additional noise 
and higher temps to save 10 bucks. Of course, if you wanna take the build aesthetics to the next level, then just about any 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler is sufficient, and 360 millimeter coolers are pretty much massive overkill, but since we're talking about high-end builds, feel free to go 360 if that gives you better aesthetic in your PC build case. In particular, I like the Deepcool LS520 or 720, or the SE models, which are a bit cheaper, but have more cabling. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 in either 240 or 360 millimeter versions is a surprisingly affordable high-end performer. And you can even use something like the Thermalright Frozen lineup of AIOs starting around $50. I'll leave some options linked down in the video description that you can check out. Let's talk about the best SSD for the Ryzen 7800X 3D. Now, if you haven't had a chance to check out our best SSD for gaming video, I'll leave a link to it down in the video description for a deeper dive. But basically, there is no current gaming benefit from using anything faster than even a SATA SSD. That being said, PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4 M.2 NVMe drives are now cheaper than SATA SSDs, and there's no fuss with cable management, so that's what we're focusing on today. Meanwhile, PCIe Gen 5 SSDs are crazy high priced by comparison, and there is zero, and I mean zero, gaming benefit over PCIe Gen 3 or 4 NVMe SSDs. Heck, there's almost no production benefits either. Unfortunately, SSD prices have gone up, and there is now a considerable gap in drives that have DRAM caches versus DRAMless drives. For more budget-focused builds, I'd recommend grabbing a cheaper Gen 3 or Gen 4 NVMe with a good SLC cache or host memory buffer process like the Silicon Power A60, Team Group MP33, or Western Digital SN580. For more premium builds looking to add a DRAM cache to make their SSD a little snappier when doing things like file copies and game installs, consider grabbing a drive like the Team Group MP34 or possibly the MS size Spadium M480 Pro, but my recommendation is not to overspend too much here. In particular, for a number of drives, four terabyte versions are actually the best price per terabyte right now. And this isn't 2015 anymore, so you don't need a separate drive for your operating system, so it's absolutely fine to have a single large capacity drive, especially if that saves you money. I'll leave several of these linked down in the video description. For the PC case, what we want here is good airflow, and since this is likely a higher end build, we'd also like it to look great too. Good budget options can be had for as little as about $60 with the BitPhoenix Nova Mesh Micro ATX case that comes with three included ARGB fans, and it's one of my favorite price to performance picks, along with the Deepcool CC360 ARGB, both which come in black and white colors. Budget ATX size cases, for those of you using an ATX size motherboard, start right around $65 to $70 for something like the Antec NX410. And that comes with two 140 millimeter and 120 millimeter ARGB fans and comes in either white or black. Up to options like the Montec Sky 2 with its wraparound atrium style look and four included ARGB fans in white, black, and even blue for right around $90. Of course, for you NZXT lovers looking for something different, I also like the NZXT H6 Flow RGB for right around $120 with three ARGB fans. We built our recent 7800X3D builds in the Lee & Lee Landcool 216 RGB case, which I absolutely love for right around $100, and our MSI Project Zero build use a rear motherboard connection capable case in the MSI Pano M100R for $109 in both white and black with four included ARGB fans, and this case also works with regular motherboards. Just note it only fits micro ATX size motherboards, not full ATX size ones. Everything's linked down in the video description. Finally, let's talk about PSUs. If you haven't seen our How to Buy a PSU 2024 guide, we cover how to size and buy the best unit for your build based on unit quality rather than nonsensical 80 plus ratings. I'll leave a link below. For a build like this, given the high-end GPUs we're considering for it, as well as the fact that many want to consider future drop-in CPU upgrades, I'd recommend getting at least a B-tier or better PSU as rated on the PSU cultist list, and then sizing it 1.5 times the max rated draw in PC Par Picker. If you're gonna drop in an RX 7900 XTX, RTX 4080 Super, or RTX 4090, then definitely grab an A-tier rated PSU. Finally, let's talk about build costs. Now, I've put together two build templates to get you started. The first is a value-focused build that uses the Ryzen 7800 X3D, currently $390, with a mid-range air cooler, mid-range ATX size motherboard, DDR5 6000 CL30 non-RGB RAM, a two terabyte budget NVMe SSD, an MSRP priced RTX 4070 Ti Super, a value focused PC case, and a B tier rated 850 watt PSU on the PSU cultist list. Now that build comes in right around $1,750 to $1,800, 
and it could be done a little bit cheaper if needed. For a more premium build that doesn't stray too far from value, I've switched the cooler to a reasonably priced 240 millimeter AIO liquid cooler with RGB, upgraded the motherboard to a more premium model. I've gone with RGB on the RAM at the same speed. I've upgraded the NVMe to one with DRAM at Gen 4 speed, added in a more premium Atrium style case and an AT rated PSU, all for just a little more than $1,900. Obviously, if you want to spend more, you can, but those templates should get you started. And I'll leave both linked down in the video description for you to check out along with alternative parts. Remember to check out those links down in the video description for current pricing and availability in your region. And let me know down in the comments, what do you think about pairing your Ryzen 7800X 3D with in terms of a GPU? And of course, if you got value out of this video, please give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. Hey, that way you get notified when we release cool content and we'll catch you on the next one.